I'm at Taylor Shellfish right here at Melrose Market in Seattle, hanging out with one of my favorite critters, a Northwest icon to be sure, and that is the gooey duck clam. We're looking at $30 worth of clam here. Here's a giant whopper, a two pounder. Beautiful neck on this. That's what we're gonna be eating today. Joining me is Kevin Bartlett with uh, Taylor Shellfish here at Melrose Market. And Kevin, you have to tell me, how do I pick the best gooey duck out of this big batch? Sure, absolutely. What you're gonna be looking for as you kind of grab the gooey ducks is it, they're gonna be tracked a little bit. You're gonna make sure that they're still firm, nice round shape. If you're looking for that. If you're ever questioning, you can always ask to see the tags. Uh, they should see the day they were harvested, where they're out of. These guys currently are out of the Peel Passage in the South Puget Sound. And how were they harvested? How'd they get in here? Sure, so um, we actually, we farm raise these guys. Those one pounders you were showing earlier are gonna be about three years old. They actually find these guys like up to over 100 years old sometimes. Wow, amazing. Absolutely. Yeah, they were around when Abraham Lincoln was practicing law. <laughs> well, you're making me hungry just talking about this. So I always say the proof of the pudding is in the eating. Let's go try one. Sounds great. All right. All right, so preparing the gooey duck is actually pretty simple. People tend to get intimidated by them for one reason or another. So we'll start in, we'll count, a, we'll count eight gooey duck, all right? All right. One gooey duck, two gooey, gooey duck, three, three gooey, gooey duck, four, four gooey duck, duck five, five gooey, gooey duck, duck, six gooey duck, seven gooey duck, eight gooey duck. All right, and then we pull them out. There we go. That's gonna stop the process of it actually cooking because we want to eat nice. this guy raw. Give him a little bit. Okay, Good stuff. let's see what we've done. So the skin itself just peels off pretty easy. I like to start right at the bottom and move right along. And you know, that skin even covers the shell itself to prevent that from uh, oxidizing while it's in the seawater. Otherwise that shell would be kind of like a uh, roll eight or something. <laughs> Push right through. Nice. Right through on the other side. So what we're presented with, once we get in here, is this visceral mass here. It's known as their uh, gut ball. You can see that it's got their gills and everything, all the reproductive parts. That also you can just kind of squeeze off the front, squeeze off the back. And the rest of it here is all for eating. So now we're talking about muscle meat. There you go. We'll do the siphon here. Um, this part right here is what we like to do with their chowder. Uh, it's actually just it's their mantle. It's really uh, fatty. It's actually fattier than like a razor clam even. Yeah. Okay, so we have the siphon here. That's all muscle meat, right? Mm -hmm. That's good stuff. Absolutely. But what are we going to do with it? Uh, so now we're just going to do some thin slices of it. Because it is such a strong muscle, it tends to be... It has a really interesting characteristic to the, uh, the profile of it, where it ends up having a little bit of like a crunch, like a cucumber. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we just slice it right in half like this. And then we do just thin slices, kind of at an angle. And this is the stuff that great sushi bars are made on. All right, then we plate it up. Sir? Why, thank you very much. <laughs> Doesn't that look fabulous? Well, I'm just gonna dive right in. Bon appetit. Oh yeah, that's delicious. And you're right, like a cucumber crunch. Yep. Kevin, that was fabulous. Thank you so much for the feast. Always a I pleasure. I gotta come back for more.